Hey guys, welcome to another Q&A session from the Reaper blog. I'm John. The YouTube channel just reached 5,000 subscribers. Thank you guys so much for subscribing. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do. This video is sponsored by my own tutorial video, Mixing in Reaper Volume 1. In this video, I take a song from beginning to end, from organization to mastering. I also remix the song using only Reaper plugins, and uh, it's really interesting to see the differences there. Plus, I answer a few questions that came up throughout the course of that series. It's over five hours of video in six parts, and it's HD 1080p, uh, really clean, crisp quality. I've been getting a lot of great feedback from the series, and I myself have learned a lot of things from making it. So uh, I'm looking forward to starting on the next series and getting that out for you guys to buy and support the Reaper blog. Okay, let's get into the questions. First question comes from Mr. Boudna. Do you have any solution for the OMF issue? Do you have any idea how to do sound design for video and get your files from Premiere or Avid? AA Translator is too expensive. Well, if you do a lot of this kind of work, AA Translator will be worth the money. It's $200 and it gets you uh, not only OMF importing, but converting directly from a Pro Tools session to Reaper and all these other formats. OMF as a standard is not very good because this standard changes depending on who is creating it, and every program interprets things differently. It's not a foolproof solution. As well, there's a lot of times you don't actually need OMF. You need a reference video and you need a guide track from the video software, but you don't necessarily need every single uh, piece of dialogue. Um, if you're doing dialogue editing, that's a different story. But again, you can consolidate all those tracks. Personally, I try to use consolidated waves with time code whenever possible. I get a reference video with the time code embedded, and that's worked really well for me. There's also this program called Vortigo, which will convert uh, XML exports from Final Cut or Premiere and convert that into a Reaper project. And from the Reaper project, you can convert that back to an XML and bring that into uh, Premiere or Final Cut. So you've got in and out of Reaper, and you get all of your little individual clips, and everything's named and organized and colored. Um, it works really, really well, and that's only, I believe it's $60. And again, if you're doing this sort of work a lot, those programs will pay for themselves. All right, next question comes from Matthew Nash. Is there a way to stop Reaper from making peak files so they don't clutter up the projects and recordings? On the website, if you search for file management, um, I have a quick list of the file management things with links to individual articles on how to set those up. And I guess at some point, I will make a new video that encompasses all those things, all those tips, and puts it in one place. What I do is make a folder for all of the peak files and keep them all together. And then automatically I have that clean up every seven days, any file that's older than seven days that gets cleaned out. Peak files are just temporary, so you can delete them at any time. Reaper rebuilds them as needed. Next question comes from Tim Atkins. Do you have any tips for spotting sound effects? I like to use a lot of markers and the snap offset on items. So I will insert a marker where a sound should be. I'll advance frame by frame and make sure that marker is in the right spot. Then I grab my files, and from the Media Explorer, I can drop them in. If I need to do any editing, I'll drop them roughly in place, move the uh, snap offset, and then snap that to the marker line. And once that's all done, I'll delete the marker. And the other thing that comes to mind is fine-tuning that start offset by holding Alt and dragging, and then auditioning the clip about a thousand times, just to make sure everything sounds right. Get comfortable with cut, copy, paste, and actions like um, move selected item to the edit cursor. So let's say at the end of the session, you have a portion of your project that you just use for sound design, chopping stuff up and things like that. And then you want to spot those into a particular spot. There's a keyboard shortcut to uh, snap the selected item over to the cursor. Next question comes from Roy Robley. Is there a way to get Reaper to open a list of session notes for a project every time it opens? Yeah, so this is right in the project settings window. Anything you type in there will pop up when you load the project. 
There are also a lot of other ways to leave notes for yourself in a project. You can insert MIDI items and just change the item name to leave yourself a note on the timeline. You can drop in images. You can use scripts to create um, note items. I use a lot of markers with different symbols to identify different things. So uh, there's a lot of different things you can do with that. The last question comes from Lars Gustafsson. I'd like to see a tutorial on how to use Reacomp as a limiter. I usually put ratio to infinity, check limit output, and set threshold to about minus 0.1 dB. I'm not sure if that's the way to do it or not. That's basically what you need to do. You also need to look at the RMS value. If you want to use it like a brick wall limiter, something like Waves L1, you want the auto gain turned on as well. So as you lower the threshold, it pushes up the output level. I have a preset for Recomp that's very similar to the L1 when used in that way. And I use that fairly often on individual tracks, not really on masters. If you want like a brick wall limiter, you're better off looking at the JS plugin folder and look at Event Horizon by Stillwell. And that's a stripped down version of the VST plugin. Basically that won't let anything through and it'll just clip things off. They're kind of different tools, but you can use them together and make sure that nothing gets past read comp. Um, that's giving you the, the vibe that you want, plus just safety from uh, Event Horizon. And that's it, another five questions answered for this month. Uh, thank you guys so much. Thanks again for subscribing. If you haven't subscribed, please do. Check out my premium tutorial, Mixing in Reaper Volume 1, and also check out reaperblog.net for more tutorials. Thanks a lot, guys. See you later.